So it was 1970, 1994, and my oldest daughter was studying abroad in what she said was a small town outside of Mexico City that was very safe, and so we should not worry. She was my oldest daughter. I'd never heard of traveling abroad to study before. It was 1994. And she got there, and she was just miserable. It was cold at night. She couldn't find wool socks. They were rationing toilet paper. She just hated it. Everything was awful. So we decided we had to go down there and see exactly what was going on because she was enrolled for this trimester. So it was just when charter flights came out and we couldn't really fly into this small town and Mexico City was really expensive, but they had charter flights. So we went and got a map of Mexico. It was 1994, it was before really the internet. And so we went and got a map and we looked at it and well, there's two places on the coast we could go that we could drive to this small town of Cornavaca, just right outside of Mexico City. And we looked at, there was Acapulco and you could take a road up to Cornavaca or there was Ixtapa. And as we looked at the map, it looked like it was really close from Ixtapa. You could just drive over the mountain and you could get there. So we decided we'd fly into Ixtapa. We got to the hotel and the first thing we did was find the concierge and we got a car rented so that we could drive there. And then we asked the guy, how did we get to this small road that went to Ixtapa? Oh no, he said, you have to go to Acapulco. Well, we said, if we'd wanted to go to Acapulco, we would have flown to Acapulco. We want to get on this road that goes here from Ixtapa. Oh no, you have to go to Acapulco. So we looked at each other and we thought, yeah, we'll just ask a local, we'll find this, this little road. So we got the car all rented. The next night we were supposed to call my daughter at the place where she was staying at her um, host house to let her know where we'd meet her, what time we'd see her. We were supposed to call her at seven o'clock. So at seven o'clock we walk down to the lobby of the hotel and we tell the woman what we have to do. She walks from the desk back to the desk with all the little wires and she takes out the wire and she plugs it in here and she takes out that wire and she plugs it in there. And then she takes it out and she plugs the wire again and she plugs this wire over here. And she does that several times until she says, oh, I'm sorry to tell you all the wires are down. You, we, we can't make a call. Well, can we go to another hotel and make a call? Well, you could try that, but when this happens, I think that all the wires are out all over Zihuatanejo. Well, what do we do? We have to call our daughter. I'm starting to panic, because how do we go meet her? She says, I think you're going to have to go to Ixtapa. Okay, well, we'll just call a cab and, oh, we can't do that. She says, well, just if you walk down to the bottom of the hill, there should be cabs waiting there for you. Okay, so we started to walk down to the bottom of the hill and a man comes up and says, excuse me, did you need to get to Ixtapa? Because I own a restaurant there and I can drive you. We look at each other, do we take this chance? And we thought, well, he looks respectable, we'll do that. So we pile, my husband and I and our two kids into the Volkswagen Beetle and he drives us over to Ixtapa, and he says, I'm pretty sure this hotel's gonna have a telephone. So we go running into this hotel up to the desk, and the guy looks startled, like, who are you people coming to see us? And we explain, I've got, I've got to talk to my daughter, it's really, really important, you have to call her, because I was supposed to talk to her, and he says, all right, let me look up the cost so you can pay, and he pulls it out of the desk, and he looks up, and he tells us the cost, and we quickly find all our pesos, and we scramble, and we pay him the money, and then he walks into the back room to tell the operator, and he says, if you go over to that phone over there and you wait, she'll place the call, and she'll come and get you. So we go over there, and I'm tapping my feet, and I'm panicking, because what are we gonna do? It's my oldest daughter, and she's in this strange place, and I don't know how to reach her. And the telephone rings and I pick it up and I say, hello, April. It's her roommate who only speaks Japanese. <laughs> Who's learning Spanish. And I have a little bit of Spanish. So between her Spanish and my Spanish, I understand that my daughter went out to bailar. She went out to go dancing? I'm going through all this 
stuff to try to find, and she went out dancing. So I have to figure out at the last minute, okay, what do I do? Will there be a phone tomorrow? Where do I reach her? How do I find out where she is? So thinking quickly, I say, all right, tell her, we'll meet her in the Zocalo at two o'clock. I'm so proud of myself. I know there's a Zocalo, and I know about Mexican towns, and there's this central place we'll be able to find her. And I hang up, oh no. <laughs> and my husband says, you're crazy. How will this how will you ever find her? So the next day, the car didn't arrive when it was supposed to. It came four hours late, because apparently there was only one rental car in all of Ixtapa. We, we started down. We were going to find the road over the mountain. We asked a local. He was like, you've got to go to Acapulco. Muy peligroso, muy peligroso. My husband figured out peligroso meant dangerous. We went to Acapulco. A three quarters of the way there, we saw a sign that said quota or libre. Well, libre means free, so quota must mean cost. So we took the libre, which means it was the old road that went through the mountains and up and down and around, and there was nothing there. Hours later, it was dark. I didn't know what we would do. We came across a sign that said Coinavaca. We followed the sign, we went to the top of the hill, and there was a town from horizon to horizon, as far as I could see. How would we ever find our daughter? We drove into town. We found all the signs. We followed, finally, signs that said Sokolo. We followed it all the way to the end to a T. There was no place else we could go. Where were we going to park? What were we going to do? Suddenly, my youngest daughter calls out, there's April, my daughter. She's walked across the street in front of us. Next time, I won't panic, I will listen to the locals. <laughs>